Hi, welcome to youwillunderstandmath.com. Today you will understand how to write an epsilon delta proof for the limit of a quadratic function. Here's the definition of a limit. The limit of a function f of x as x approaches some real number c equals some real number l if for every epsilon greater than zero there exists delta greater than zero such that the distance between x and c between zero and delta implies that the distance between the function and L is less than epsilon. In this example, I want to prove that the limit of x squared minus 6x plus 5 as x approaches 3 equals negative 4. Before we begin our proof, we need to figure out what the function is, what c is, and what L is. That's what I've done here. The function, according to our definition, is x squared minus 6x plus 5 c is 3 and l is negative 4. We'll have scratch work that we will need to complete in order to find the delta that works for this proof. In other words, this delta will always ensure that the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. The way we do that is we begin with what we want. We begin with the absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon. Now remember, in our case, f of x is x squared minus 6x plus 5. We have x squared minus 6x plus 5 minus l. l is negative 4 less than epsilon. We'll begin with this and somehow in our scratch work, make sure that we end up with something of this form, x minus 3, because c is 3, is less than some delta of epsilon. Simplifying here, we have x squared minus 6x plus 9, because we have 5 plus 4, which gives us the 9, and that's less than epsilon. Factoring x squared minus 6x plus 9 gives us x minus 3 times x minus 3. Now this is inside absolute value, so this is exactly the same as the absolute value of x minus 3 times the absolute value of x minus 3. And this is the same as the absolute value of x minus 3 all squared. Now remember, our goal is to get the absolute value of x minus 3 less than some delta in terms of epsilon. In other words, I definitely need the absolute value of x minus 3 by itself on the left side. Well, the only reason that this expression does not look like this expression is because this one is squared. Well, how do we undo a square? We can take the square root of both sides. Taking the square root of both sides, the square goes away. Now we have the absolute value of x minus 3, and we have, on the right side, the square root of epsilon. Therefore, we will consider this, the square root of epsilon, to be delta. This will be delta in terms of epsilon. We'll choose delta equals the square root of epsilon. And this works in our proof because delta only needs to be positive, And it needs to ensure that the distance between f of x and l is always less than epsilon, which it will because that's how we obtained it in our scratch work. We assumed that the distance between f of x and l was less than epsilon, and we acquired this delta value. I'm going to do a forward proof first, and then in another video, I'll do the backwards proof. In any epsilon delta proof, we begin with epsilon being an arbitrary small positive value. And we also state what delta will be in our proof at the very beginning. Next, we state that the distance between x and c, in our case 3, will be between 0 and delta. This means that the distance between x and 3 will always be less than delta, and x will never equal 3 itself because of the left-hand side of this inequality. I'm calling this a forward proof because from this point on, I plan to go in the forward direction through my scratch work. I'll begin with f of x minus l and somehow end up with that being less than epsilon. 
Moving in the forward direction through my scratch work, notice how the proof follows, where the absolute value of x minus 3 is squared. Now, what do I do? I use the fact that the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta. Then, the absolute value of x minus 3 all squared will be less than delta all squared, like so. We definitely need this less than symbol in our proof because we're trying to prove that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. This is the key. This is why we went through the scratch work in order to find a delta that will always make this true. Now let's substitute the square root of epsilon for delta. Simplifying this, we have epsilon. We began with the absolute value of f of x minus l. We have all of these equalities, therefore, the absolute value of x squared minus 6x plus 5 minus negative 4 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3 all squared. This happens to be less than epsilon, so that means that our original absolute value function is less than epsilon. Therefore, we've proven that the limit as x squared minus 6x plus 5 as x approaches 3 equals negative 4. In the next video, I will show you how to prove the same limit statement in the backward direction. Thank you for watching. Please like and or subscribe if you've enjoyed this video.